Okay, we are now recording. Good morning. My name is Andrew Kress, and I am the president of the California Association for Institutional Research Board, affectionately known as CARE. Um, thanks so much for joining us today for our fourth installment of the CARE Data Talks series. And these online workshops and seminars are an opportunity for the community to connect with new tools and practices that enhance the IR profession's mission of supporting evidence-based decision-making. The recording of the session will be made available on the CARE webpage um, at a link that I'll provide to you in the chat. Um, today with us, we have several colleagues from um, Plaid Analytics, which is a partner organization of CARES. I'll let them introduce themselves in just a minute. Um, they're gonna be demonstrating for us today an open source tool called Data Hub uh, that they're gonna talk to you uh, much more in depth about. It supports data governance, data integrity, um, things that we all um, care about, I know, in the CARE community. Um, in the latter half of the session, they're going to be guiding us through a hands-on interactive tutorial on Data Hub. So start stretching your, um, your typing fingers and uh, be ready for um, interacting with us uh, during that experience. Um, if sessions like this are of interest to you, I encourage you to sign up for the CARE Listserv, which you can do on our website, care.org. And um, you can receive announcements about additional professional development opportunities like this, in addition to our upcoming conference in La Jolla, California. I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's people that appear to be having lots of fun parasailing. And so you can come visit us uh, in November 16th through 18th, 2022, and uh, parasail and also maybe um, get some great professional development experience at the same time. If you're interested in that, please go ahead and navigate over to care.org slash care2022 care ad analytics. All right. Thank you, Andrew, for the kind introduction. Uh, I'll introduce myself as the other Andrew, but you can call me Drinkwater because that's easy to say and uh, pretty unique. Um, I'm Andrew Drinkwater. I'm the president of Plaid Analytics. We are an analytics firm based in Vancouver, Canada, and we help institutions across North America advance their analytics. For us, this takes a few different forms, uh, primarily around data engineering, visualization, um, enrollment forecasting, and then the strategy and governance to make those things successful. All right, so today we're going to talk about supporting data governance uh, with a tool called Data Hub. And we came across Data Hub earlier this year um, as, a, as a happy coincidence from a project that we were working on in California with a community college, looking to help them better be able to document the information that they were viewing through Tableau dashboards ultimately understanding where does that information come from. So in the case of that project, it involves the Tableau dashboards, as mentioned, there are data sources on Tableau server, some of them are shared, some of them are embedded. Those are sourced from a data warehouse that we help them build. Those themselves come from multiple different systems, but primarily the banner student information system, some spreadsheets, and occasionally the odd cloud system can be worked into the mix as well. Um, and Data Hub was a way of being able to manage all that different information from a metadata perspective. So what information is included in, say, the data warehouse, or where does it come from in Banner, what's used in Tableau, et cetera, and to be able to provide some visibility into that. So that project is in progress. It's not yet complete, but we're working with Data Hub as a way of providing all this documentation. Uh, other Andrew, this is your reminder to start the recording. But Thank you. We're good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to talk about today? We'll introduce who Plaid is and who the team is that's on the line today. We'll introduce what Data Hub is in a little bit more detail than what I talked about here. And then we will do a hands on workshop uh, for those interested, which will take about 45 minutes. Uh, questions are welcome anytime, but we do have a QA block towards the end. Uh, so, what does Plaid do? As an example we talked about earlier, we worked with community colleges and universities to build automated data pipelines, data warehouses and data lakes that are higher ed focused and enrollment forecasting tools. To be successful with those things, we need strategy and governance wrapped around them. And so the governance component is what we're talking about today with Data Hub. We work with leading institutions across North America to build their analytics capacity. Here's a few examples. Uh, I'm Andrew Drinkwater, I'm the president and co-founder of Plaid Analytics. And uh, prior to launching Plaid about five and a half years ago, I worked for the University of British Columbia in Canada. I was a senior planning and research analyst there responsible for tuition, 
and enrollment forecasting and emissions data warehousing. I got my start in higher ed working as an academic advisor in the early 2000s, helping students navigate shutting down one university, absorbing it into another and changing the programs, which was a fascinating way to start my career and ultimately led into my data experience with Tableau uh, as the start of my journey towards where we find ourselves here today. I will turn it over to my colleague, Pat, to introduce himself and Clara. Good morning. Uh, I'm Pat Lahid. I'm uh, the other co-founder at Plaid. Um, I have spent uh, almost 25 years now in various different uh, higher education institutions in uh, different areas from um, information technology services for academic units to central student services uh, to institutional research and lots of other places in, in between. Um, I'm Clara. I'm an analyst architect here at Plaid. Um, so most of my background is with higher education and ERP implementation, and right now I am working on a few of the projects with Plaid. Thanks, Clara. Clara is also very modest. She's a national and international champion at cheerleading, recently returned from the World Championship in Florida, um, taking home fifth place in the world and uh, put Canada third on the map. So congratulations to Clara, and uh, sorry for embarrassing you in this live talk. <laughs> First on the map in Canada. First, yes. first on the map in Canada. First, first in Canada. <laughs> right. Yes. Third Canada, third place in the world was what I meant to say there. Congratulations to you and your team. It's an incredible achievement. We're here today to talk about a tool called Data Hub. And this is an open source metadata management tool. It's effectively a spin-off, if you can call an open source tool that, from LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn had these challenges with how to manage myriad data from different databases and cloud systems and information about users and staff and how this was used in dashboards, et cetera, et cetera. And so the need is not actually that different than what we talked about in higher education. It's just different data. And so they have, uh, over the last, I believe it's year or so, uh, open sourced this tool. And so it's still supported by LinkedIn through various developers. There's also a couple of other companies who are very active in supporting this tool. Uh, primarily Acryl Data uh, is the one leading the open source initiative right now. There's a few others. And of course, Plaid is helping where we can as well, in particular with the new integration with with Tableau that we will show today. Um, Pat was uh, instrumental in finding some of the bugs in the earliest releases of that so that it would work as well as hopefully it will live today. Um, so thanks to Pat for contributing back to the community as well. Uh, so Data Hub supports a number of different things that you'll see today. Um, it supports search and discovery of data sets. So we'll walk through some examples of how to find data sets that are from say the banner student information system or the data warehouse or Tableau and see how those relate to other pieces in the, in the, uh, in the system. Uh, it'll also help you understand lineage, which is my favorite feature. So being able to work my way backwards from what's in this visualization to where did that data come from in Tableau to where did that data come from in the data warehouse to where, if it's applicable, did that come from in Banner? Uh, to me, this is really, really cool. So uh, I'm a big fan of that part. Um, it also supports documentation and tags, which is very necessary. So what does this calculated field mean? Or what does this field from the source system mean? Maybe there's some fields that probably shouldn't be used. And maybe we want to have that in the documentation as well. It supports business glossaries built upon that. Um, and then it also has uh, support for data governance roles and user access. So if you think... Um, you know, a committee or organization within your university or college that's responsible for data governance. Those roles are supported in different ways. And you can also manage the visibility of what different users have access to. And then there's lots of other features. The one other thing I'll mention is that they are innovating super, super fast. There's a new release just about every week um, with some interesting new features every time. So um, this list will change very quickly would be my guess. Uh, this is just an example. So I mentioned lineage is my favorite feature. Um, this helps us understand where a term table from banner gets used uh, in the data warehouse is kind of the first column there. And then, or sorry, um, in the data integration tool is the first column. Second column is the data warehouse, roughly speaking. Third stage is some further integrations. And then fourth stage is the actual end result tables that we might use to support our visualizations, which come further uh, downstream. Okay, so in our view, there's some major pluses to a tool like Data Hub. Uh, it supports, it is open source, 
um, by nature. So if you want to get started on your own with open source and you're familiar with that community, and especially if you've got some programming chops, it is awesome. Um, there's also options to have it hosted for you. We'll talk about some of those later today as well. So if uh, you don't want to manage all of it, there are other options available. Um, I mentioned innovation. They are moving so fast. So three months ago, they didn't support Tableau. We were trying to figure out how to do it. And now they have really robust uh, information about Tableau, as an example. Um, you can connect to a wide variety of different systems, whether they're relational database systems or visualization tools or cloud tools, et cetera, there's lots. Um, this helps you promote trust in your data by making it more visible to your users what different information is, where it comes from. And this can support your data governance initiatives. Okay, so um, we are going to do a really quick demonstration of what the tool is for those who can only join us for half an hour. Um, and then after that, I'll turn it over to Pat for the more detailed interactive workshop. So no need to follow along at this point unless you want to, um, but this will give a brief overview of what the tool is. When you have created your account with Strigo and you log in, you should be presented that looks something like this. Um, I'll note here that the lab is reconnecting piece is uh, very common and basically don't need to worry about it for now. So what we're gonna be doing is we're taking a small bit of information from here and we're gonna open a new browser tab. You may also see an error message like something went wrong. Um, this is our first time using this platform and we found the workaround, but we still need to figure out the what went wrong piece. So our apologies for, for that part. But what we're gonna do when we log in is we're gonna click the gear icon and then the machine info, and we're gonna copy the dynamic DNS. And Pat will go through this in more detail with you later. And then we're gonna open a new browser tab. And then we'll be presented with the Data Hub screen. Once you've got this for a login, you'll log in using the username and password provided, which looks like I spelled wrong. So it should be Data Hub and Data Hub. Apologies for that. Um, once you log in, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks like this. It knows that you're new. So here I should stress that my environment for this is different from your environment for this, is different from Pat's, is different from Andrew's, et cetera. Um, but they all have the same foundation. So you can do whatever you want here. You won't break it for anybody else. Um, go for it. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to start out. And what we can see is that the explore your metadata has no metadata found. So right now this is an empty shell, there's no information in it. What we're gonna do as a starting point here is we are going to uh, ingest some information. And so if we click on ingestion, which was up at the top right hand side there, we'll see that we have a number of different data sources that we've created for you in advance. So we've created a shell of a banner database and a shell of a data warehouse using the MySQL uh, relational database management system. You'll note that this is MySQL rather than something like Oracle, and that's because MySQL is already built into Data Hub. We don't have to install any additional packages, but it does support Oracle and SQL Server and so on. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to ingest banner first. So this is banner using air quotes. Um, this is a demonstration database that Plaid has. It has a variety of tables that are mostly looking like banner and have a bunch of fake data in them. However, for data hubs purposes, we're not ingesting any actual data. We're just ingesting the structural information. So what tables, what columns, what types are they, et cetera. So we'll start by hitting execute. And as a reminder, we'll go through this in much more detail following this. And it has been submitted and it's now running. This usually goes pretty quickly. In the interest of time, I'm also gonna kick off the integration of the data warehouse. So I'll hit execute on that one as well. And uh, Andrew, if it would help to maybe uh, address a question in the meantime, we did have something from Bob in the chat um, and he's saying, can you remind us what's being ingested? What data are being ingested here? So the, the short version here is what we're ingesting is the schema. So it's uh, we're pulling in information about what, what tables are available, what fields are available on those tables. Um, in some cases, depending on the data source, and once we get in particular to Tableau, we can show some of this off, that there may be some comment information that's available uh, that can get pulled in automatically if there's, uh, again, some data sources, if there's calculated fields. There is in some data sources an option to uh, profile your data. 
um, which will look at some of the data in the tables um, to give you some statistics or around different fields, how many rows there are, how many nulls there might be. That is completely optional, and it's something that you that is turned off in these recipes by default. So all you're getting is the schema. The information in particular that these databases are connecting to, they've got no data in them. This is all we've done is we've populated the schema. Uh, if you could actually poke around a little bit in here. Um, and, and if you're technically savvy, you can actually get to the database itself. You'll find that they're all empty tables. All we're bringing in is, is the schema. Okay, uh, so now we've successfully imported our fake banner um, metadata and our data warehouse metadata. Um, so now I'm going to click on the home icon up at the top here. And now rather than that greeting screen that said you're brand new here, I actually have 79 data sets. So one for each table, basically. I'll click on that and then I can see in production and my SQL for the type of database, I now have two different databases. So a banner and a data warehouse. Let's start with banner just so we can see what our starting point is for some of this. For those who are familiar with the student information system, you will see that every table name is a helpful seven characters long and it's prefixed in a data hub by the name of the database. So we called ours banner, but in your campus, it will probably be called something else like ban PRD or something like that. Um, so we've imported around uh, 40 odd tables from banner. This is by no means all of them, just to be clear, there's thousands in most operational systems, uh, but it gives us a good starting point for a demonstration. Within any given table, you can click on it and you can get the schema information. So we can see at the top uh, primary keys, foreign keys, uh, what type of field it is, and then we can work our way down the list. If we want to, we can add descriptions by hovering over the particular um, column and saying, giving a description. So we'll call this academic level or something like that. On the right hand side, we can also add uh, documentation for the table itself as opposed to the individual fields. Um, or we can link it to external documentation if that's applicable. We can add tags to help us cluster like things together. Um, and we can have a data owner that Pat will talk about a little bit later. Uh, so that's our starting point on the banner data. If we go into the data warehouse data, uh, what we see here is that we prefix this with data warehouse and we have information on uh, anonymous students, applications, course enrollments, course sections, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's the same kind of structure. So here we've got a schema, it's got primary keys um, and foreign keys, and it tells us what kind of fields the, the different fields are. Uh, and then we can have table level documentation as well. And we'll come back to some more stuff on this once we're finished our next ingestion. So if I go back to the home screen and I click on ingestion again, I can now execute uh, my, what we've called lineage. So in this case, we use a tool called FME, which is made by Safe Software. And it's a data integration tool that connects to about 500 different uh, platforms, anything from locally hosted to cloud hosted, et cetera, and everything in between, it has the world's best support for spatial data. And in the context of higher education, has a really compelling pricing model for an enterprise data integration tool um, that will allow you to connect all your different systems together, automate the workflows, make it so that when somebody uploads a file, this can be reflected in your data warehouse and ultimately in your visualizations. It's a really cool tool. Um, so we highly recommend, we're happy to chat about it. So I'm gonna execute that one. And then also in the interest of time, I will, actually that one should be pretty quick. Any other questions in the chat that we've missed? I think we got all of them. So for those who haven't seen, if your lab says it's reconnecting or something went wrong, this is uh, quote unquote normal at this point. Um, just click the gear icon at the top and go to the machine info. Uh, to Julie's question, the name of the tool is FME. Um, at one point, this stood for feature manipulation engine, um, feature being uh, a field in your data. Um, definitely worth checking out. We've had some great universities and colleges begin working with it in the last uh, two years since the higher ed pricing model became available. And it's a visual tool to allow you to integrate data from different, different systems. Okay, so now our lineage is available. So this adds an additional layer here. We now have a pipeline and a different platform for FME. So out of the box, FME is not yet supported by Data Hub. We've built this custom, um, but we imagine at some point in the future, it'll become core to the 
uh, core to the platform. So let's now search for the table STV term. So this is Banner's term lookup table that has information on what these different term codes mean when the terms start, when they end, et cetera, et cetera. So now when I search this, I can see a data set called banner.stv term. So let's look at that. And we can see here the different columns that are available within that data. But here I wanna show the lineage. This is now available because we connected our banner database to our data warehouse using that lineage ingestion that read our FME workflows. So now, just make this a little bit bigger. So now I can see that STV term is used by five different workflows from FME as a starting point. I'm going to focus on stage application. So stage application looks at application-like information for, say, the current day, and it's ultimately used further downstream to compare that to what's already in the data warehouse. Essentially, to answer the question, has this record been updated or not? If it's been updated, I need to make a new record to say, we have a new record starting today, moving to infinity. If it hasn't been updated, I don't need to do anything and I don't need to waste my time updating additional snapshots, for example. I'll hit the plus button, which was here, and to see where that leads. So if I hover over stage application, it highlights in blue information that's coming into it and information that's going out of it. The auto layout here isn't perfect for presentation purposes. So I will move this a little bit so that we can see a little bit better how these pieces relate together. So now I can see my, my original STV term feeds into stage application, as does my term table that I made in the data warehouse. These feed into a data set called application. Those then feed into another staging table that is the fact table. So facts contain things like measures, how many students applied as an example. Last but not least in the chain for the data warehouse is the fact application table, which is ultimately what I would connect my Tableau or other visualization tool to. And so this part isn't live, but in a real environment, there would be additional nodes to the right of this that would show the connection directly to Tableau. Uh, a question came in about uh, learning management system data. Uh, those would be in the data warehouse depending on the project, but the basic answer is yes, they would be. Uh, last but not least here, let's bring in Tableau. So what this is doing is it's connecting to our Tableau online instance and it's looking at a demo project for uh, this particular talk. And it's going to pull in the data source and workbook information from that project. And it's gonna add those to what we have here in Data Hub. And that one's now successful. So I'll go back to the home screen again. And now you can see we have additional categories for dashboards and charts and platforms for Tableau. So I'm gonna start with the dashboard and I'm gonna to go to Tableau and care demo and then the demo workbook. There's another one in there, it's also fine. And so we have a fall enrollment summary dashboard and we can add table documentation to it just as we could with database tables. And we can add, or sorry, uh, there are charts embedded onto our dashboard already. There's also a view in Tableau link, um, but Right now, you won't all have access to our Tableau and online environment, but if this was set up for you, you could click that and get directly to the dashboard as well. Um, so within this, we have a number of charts. We can look at fall enrollment by college, for example, and we can also look at lineage from the Tableau perspective, remembering that ultimately this would connect backwards to um, our data warehouse and eventually our banner data as appropriate, but it doesn't have access to the same virtual machine. So that part is a little bit smoke and mirrors for now. So what we can see is we're looking at this one chart that belongs to this dashboard. And it really, it, it uses a data source that in hindsight, I should have renamed, um, but missed called SCB course banner. It's actually about five tables joined together in banner. And I started with SCB course. So apologies for the renaming. I can hit the plus button there to see where does that come from? And it turns out that there's a published data source called banner uh, course enrollments that I did rename. And so the difference between these two on the left is the published data source is what I already published to Tableau server. The embedded data source is the one used by the workbook. They're almost the same. The difference is that there may be some calculated fields in the embedded data source that I never put in the published data source. So let's just view that and then I will turn it over to Pat for the workshop. Okay, um, this wasn't quite the screen I was originally planning to show, but it'll come up in the workshop anyways. So what I can see here is when I'm looking at the fall enrollments by college, 
and I click on the properties tab, I can see which fields are actually being used on my Tableau visualization, which can be really helpful when I go and try and figure out if I change this field in my database, is it gonna have a knock on effect further on down the chain? What you can see here is that we have a term type field that, that is a calculated field and it pulled this directly from Tableau. So our calculated field basically starts at the case statement and the other part is a comment with a line break. Um, so I will search for the SCB course banner just to find the same information in the actual data embedded data source, um, which was the part I was trying to show earlier. Uh, so here we've got a number of different fields in this data source, some of which are calculated and here it better supports the rich text. So if we scroll down a ways to find our term type, we can now see that our formula and the first line is a comment and then our actual case statement is shown here. So it's formatted a little better on this screen than on the other one, but that's the rough information. Okay, so we are at 12 o'clock. So I'm going to turn the screen over to my colleague, Pat, uh, for sharing the interactive portion of this demonstration. Uh, so this is where we'll use the virtual machines that you signed in to previously. If you haven't had a chance to sign in, we'll post that in the chat again if you're joining us a little bit closer to 12. Um, and this concludes the high level demo of what is Data Hub and what can it do for your campus. Uh, so a couple of next steps just before people head off. Uh, if you're interested in exploring a pilot with us as design partners, um, let us know and we can talk about what that model might look like and how your campus could get on board. So this would be hosted by Plaid. We, excuse me, we'd take care of, you know, getting the setup up and running, uh, pre-populating it with common SIS glossary type information for things like Banner or PeopleSoft uh, and in the future Workday. Um, you know, we're there to help you. We've used this before, it is new, but uh, we've delved quite deeply into it and we'd be happy to, happy to lend a hand as you get rolling with it. We'll take care of testing and upgrades as well. So I mentioned that they innovate really quickly, which means also that upgrades happen very frequently and occasionally they need some additional help to make sure that they're working. So we'd take care of all of that. And uh, as came up in the chat earlier, uh, security infrastructure. So that basically, you know, nobody who's not authorized can access this. So we'd be happy to help you along with this. It's a new thing for, for everybody. Um, and we can all learn a little bit together by working collaboratively. So reach out to us if you want to chat about that. Um, you can also go the open source route. So if you just want to get your hands dirty, work, work on it with the programming, um, that is totally fine as well. There's great information and documentation available on the Data Hub project website. It's linked there. Um, and then one other question came up in the chat from Andrew earlier, and he was wondering whether uh, you need a ton of database experience to get up and running with this. And the answer I'd give with that is that it would be helpful, but not required. So at many institutions, the, the model is that IT controls the infrastructure side of things, manages the database, often builds these structures as well. And the institutional research office um, utilizes that information and maybe um, IT also manages something like Tableau server. So your IT office could also set up, say the data warehouse and database side of this, and they could be responsible for that part. And maybe in IR, you're responsible for things like government reporting tables that IT knows less about. Uh, it depends a little bit on your model of the institution, but I wouldn't say that you need tons of database experience to get up and running with this, but what you probably would need is knowledge of what information is available and where. And that knowledge could be distributed among different offices and you could have multiple users in the same data hub environment. So I hope that helps a little bit, Andrew. Um, and then our contact info is on the bottom there. Um, questions are welcome at any time.